Hello and welcome to the Figgy Art Museum's Virtual Thursdays at the Figgy series. My name is Melissa Moore and I'm Director of Education at the Figgy and I'm happy you could join us tonight. For the time being, we're hosting these virtual programs nearly every Thursday evening, so please check out the Figgy's website for topics and to register. We're able to offer these programs at no cost to you thanks to the generous sponsorship provided by Chris and Mary Rayburn. Chris and Mary, we're so grateful. Thank you. While these programs are free to watch, I do encourage you to consider becoming a Figgy member. Your support as a member helps us continue to fulfill our mission of bringing art and people together, even when we can't be together in person. So a quick note about tonight. If you have any questions during the program, please enter them into the Q&A and we'll get to them when we can. Um, we're going to have kind of a back and forth, so we'll give you a couple reminders to put those questions in, but really we encourage you to just put them in whenever you think about them, and again, we'll get to them when we can. So tonight, it is my pleasure to introduce a very special program offered in conjunction with the exhibition For America, 200 Years of Painting from the National Academy of Design. To get things started, it is my pleasure to turn things over to the University of Iowa Dance Company directors, George De La Pena and Alex Butch. George and Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you, Melissa, and thank you everyone for having us with you tonight. We're very excited to be here. Um, I'm Alex Bush, and um, with me is George De La Pena, as Melissa said. Uh, George, do you wanna say anything about the company and what we're gonna be sharing tonight? We have an excellent group of dancers from the University of Iowa, including one graduate student who is uh, returning from the profession. And we are particularly thrilled because everyone worked under such unusual circumstances, very challenging circumstances. So we are very, very proud of this company and their commitment and focus. So we hope you enjoy them. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and get started right away with the first piece. So we'll just briefly introduce it. Um, the first piece on the program is rooted. Um, that's root and then with the ED in parentheses. Um, it's by LD Kidd, who is um, on the faculty at the University of Iowa in the Department of Dance um, and teaches in our hip hop curriculum. We'll actually be joining the graduate program in the fall and we're very excited to have him as a graduate student in the program. Um, before we get started, um, actually Maggie, I think I'm gonna have you talk a little about your experience in the piece after we watch it. Um, so uh, just to, as an introduction, uh, this piece is um, primarily based in um, house dance styles. And um, the majority of the dancers were not familiar with moving in that way when they started working with LD. So it's really a testament to um, his work and their, and their focus and their work in um, what you're gonna see tonight, which is, I think really stunning. And it's one of, I'm so glad that we get to start the program off this way. So um, I think Melissa, we're, go we're ready to start with the first piece.
So that was rooted by LD Kid. And before we transition into uh, the next piece, um, I thought it might be fun to hear from Maggie, who is the soloist in that work, a little bit about her experience working with LD. Um, Maggie, had you worked with him before you um, this project, or had you just worked in the style this style before? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, for sure. So I have never met LD. I met him like probably when everyone else met him. Um, but, you know, because I was, um, I had trained in the style for like five, four years um, before that, because I went to a studio um, in Illinois that um, trained in all the different forms of hip hop dance. So I had that under my belt and like, we kind of got along because we had that language of like, okay, knowing like, you know, you have this Jack and um, that's like the basis of house dance is this type of groove that goes along with the whole um, style. And Elise talked before about how you were really the only dancer in the company who had a lot of experience in house. So what was it kind of like? Um, and if any of the other dancers would like to jump in, if you want to just use the raise hand function, I'll keep an eye on that. Um, what was it like to sort of, of build a shared language and understanding of this style of movement with people who maybe weren't as familiar with it? Can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, um, it was very interesting because I know when I like learn the style like it was very it was a very slow process like I think we did the jack groove for I think like a month or two before we even started doing anything with the feet or the arms but like I feel like because we had limited amount of time like everyone kind of just had to like you know jump in head first and um you know try to get a basis of the style like while incorporating everything so um I imagine it must have been challenging to have to do this new style, but like not have a lot of time. I think that was probably the biggest challenge was just like doing unfamiliar movement, but um, kind of like being uncomfortable for a bit in the beginning and, that, and then finally like getting um, to where we're at right now as what you just saw in the piece. Yeah. I think it's actually fascinating because I think what L it looks like what LD did was embrace that natural awkwardness and that learning process into the choreography itself and the way that he staged it and had the dancers actually like it looks like they're sort of trying to absorb and empathize with what you're doing and try it on in their own bodies which is really fun to see. Lauren let's hear from you and then we'll we'll start setting up the next piece. Yeah, um, I personally had a little bit of hip hop uh, training before coming to the university, but not nearly as much as Maggie. And I um, also was not trained in house, which I think is a very, very specific style of hip hop. And so it was really interesting and fun because going into the piece, I had expected to like you know, go through things like and learn more about house and like how to do things. And it was kind of just like a throw you into the deep end and sink or swim kind of thing. We swimmed and um, <laughs> we really worked really hard to be able to pick up. It was awesome to have Maggie in the group, especially just because she was a definitely a great person to watch and pick up on and like take inspiration from, I guess. And uh, LD kept saying that he wanted to keep it raw, like keep the choreography very raw, which I think was super fun because it allowed us to have more fun with the choreography rather than focusing too much on getting the style correct, whatever that means. Thanks, Lauren and Maggie for sharing a little bit of insight. Um, for our audience members, if you have any questions, uh, specific to any of the pieces at any point, you can go ahead and drop those in the Q&A and we can definitely come back to them between pieces and certainly at the end, um, if that makes more sense. So, so please keep them coming if you like. Uh, 
The next piece we're going to show is actually something that I choreographed. Um, it's a restaging of a work I did last year with a different group of dancers um, to music by the Hawkeye Drumline um, and the Hawkeye Marching Band. Um, I'm actually not going to say a whole lot more other than uh, it was exciting for me to, to put together something with the idea that anyone in our community here in Iowa City and part as part of the University of Iowa and really a lot of the state of Iowa would probably find something familiar to latch onto and connect with. Um, and I think many of us over the last year have really been looking for ways to connect <laughs> as much as possible and to feel um, in community with each other. So, so that's really what I wanted this piece to do, um, especially for our community here. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to uh, Melissa to queue up the next piece. This is And Let's Go.
So um, a little behind the scenes on this is that I'm married to the director of the Hawkeye Marching Band. And um, I have a background in um, video design and, and some other things as well. So um, I actually helped them coordinate their own virtual performances back in the fall. And after we put together um, the, the footage of the series, I decided I actually wanted to layer that into this piece so that the dancers could actually perform with the Hawkeye drum line that they were both doing these kind of, um, I guess, COVID era performances together um, to just add another layer of, of familiarity and um, this idea that we're all in this together. I guess we're tired of hearing that, but um, that's something that was definitely present in my mind. Um, I want to direct the conversation to Jenny Fairman, who is with us tonight. Jenny is actually in the Hawkeye Marching Band. She's a member of the undergraduate staff for the piccolo section in the band. And she also is the soloist in the opening solo of this piece. So Jenny, would you talk a little bit to us about your experience in the work and um, kind of how what it what it's like to to know this music and know this dance in, in two really different ways. Yes, thank you, Alex. Um, hello, everyone. I'm here. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Jenny. Um, and as Alex mentioned, I am a member of the Hawkeye Marching Band um, and in the piccolo section on the leadership team there. So um, being in, in this piece is really exciting for me because uh, here at Iowa, two of the biggest things I do are being a member in the dance department, also being a member of the Hawkeye Marching Band. So being in this piece that allowed me to combine the two things that I love the most that I get to do here on campus is really exciting for me. And so um, when I found out that the company was going to be doing this piece again this year, I was super excited to have the opportunity to work on it. And so, as Alex mentioned, I have like know this music in two contexts now, both through um, performing to it for dance and also um, performing to the series for marching band. So it was interesting and super exciting for me to bring um, what how like the movement that we do to the series for marching band into my performance and um, like experiences with doing this as a piece for dance and getting to share my enthusiasm for marching band with the whole cast and everyone involved in this is a lot of fun. And I'm just really thankful to be part of it all. Thanks, Jenny. Um, and we'd be happy to talk a little bit more about that process if there are any specific questions that anybody has uh, later on. Uh, George, would you like to set up the next piece is Stephanie's Young Meadows, and we're fortunate to have both dancers with us, but would you like to introduce that a little and talk a little bit about this work, because it's definitely um, something really different from everything else on the program. Uh, Stephanie's, Stephanie Miracle's exploration of this duet uh, during this unusual time was especially complicated by the fact uh, that we were trying to navigate how to interact in close proximity and uh, with safety. And fortunately, the two dancers happened to live together. Uh, and so that made that process that much easier after we went all through the hoops of making sure that we could proceed with this uh, concept. And in addition, uh, Stephanie Miracle is very intrigued by filmmaking. And so she collaborated with a filmmaker and also um, incorporated some very intriguing uh, merging of different photos and sh uh, moving shots uh, with the dancers as well. Uh, it's a beautiful piece and it's um, unusual. So I hope you, hope you will enjoy it.
So there are a lot of really wonderful layers to this piece. Um, and I think we could spend an entire evening talking to Stephanie and the dancers and the collaborators about it. But um, maybe Maggie and Sabrina, um, I don't know who would like to speak first, but can you talk a little bit about um, your uh, kind of how you started this process and um, and sort of just what that timeline looked like as, as the work developed, because I know a lot of the decisions were made, one thing affected the next into the next into the next. So um, I guess uh, Maggie, why don't you, or actually we haven't heard from Sabrina yet. Maybe Sabrina, why don't you start us off and then you guys can go back and forth a little bit. Yes, um, so this piece started actually um, despite the fact that we were able to dance quite close together on Zoom um, over winter break um, at the end of December. Uh, we were actually in different states at the time, but um, Stephanie sent us some videos of um, her doing these duets and would ask one of us to learn one part and the other to learn the other part. And then throughout the course of those beginning rehearsals, um, we would learn those, start to figure out some like moments where um, they could meet up or uh, when we got back in the studio and then also did a series of tasks um, to just develop some other movements. Um, and then when we got back in the studio together in late January, um, just kind of started to do, do the movements together, still had some more phrases to learn. Um, together literally and then um yeah it, it was really interesting because we kind of um by the end of January had these different chunks um and and figuring out how they went together what parts of the chunks stayed what parts of, parts of the chunks went um and creating um the kind of arc of the piece happened throughout the course of February and then also in in post-production um one thing that was really cool about this dance is that neither Maggie nor myself had any idea what we were going to be watching, what we were going to be hearing um, the night that it premiered, um, which was really exciting because we didn't record the piece with any music um, and except for there were there was there was some music, but it was more so for like scene setting than um, than for like timing purposes. So it was a lot of just connecting and that was a lot of the rehearsal process was how how are Maggie and I gonna you know work close we she's right there we we live together we're close friends as well um but how are we going to connect in a dancing level how is our timing going to link up yeah i feel like sabrina definitely went through the whole like rehearsal process part um i'm trying to think of something i could add i guess like the biggest um challenge was just put the like the biggest challenge for at least on the dancer side was like putting everything together um because um stephanie sent us like a video where she like duplicated herself and then um she's like okay learn it you to do a part but there were like times when like what stephanie was doing like she was in the same like space and then we're like but how would you do that because like your lunge is literally in the body of the other person. So it was um, very interesting to figure that out and like learning off a of video is always challenging, but because like, you know, um, Stephanie let us take like artistic liberties and do the movement kind of how we wanted to do it. Um, and then just to make the movement more authentic. So like we took, you know, the basis of what Stephanie was doing and we, you know, transformed it into our own body. So that was really fun. Okay, thank you, Sabrina and Maggie. Um, Georgia uh, dropped a quick question in the Q&A that I responded to. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to drop those in. Um, George, do you wanna set us up for um, the next work, which is Mindy's Can't Catch You? Um, actually, uh, why don't you do that? And oh. um, did you say I dropped something in the Q&A? No, Georgia. Somebody I named Georgia yeah. <laughs> put a question in the Q&A. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Okay, yeah. So the next piece that we're going to show is by um, Melinda Myers. Uh, it's called Can't Catch You. And um, it, uh, one of the dancers is with us tonight, Alyssa. So uh, you'll get to hear from her after we watch this. Um, this is a trio for three women, and it's set to the music of Elizabeth Moen. Um, M M Mindy, um, as we know her in the Department of Dance, was really... Um, something about this music kept um, really stayed, kept staying with her, it kept coming back and um, resonated with her on a deep level as she was pondering a lot of different things happening in her life and that she was witnessing happening in the world around us. Um, and so she reached out to Elizabeth and got permission to use this music because she was so um, connecting with it on such a deep level. So uh, we'll go ahead and show it to you. And then I think it'd be wonderful to hear from Alyssa a little bit about the process of working with Mindy on the development of this work. So um, Melissa, if you wanna go ahead and queue up on the next work, it's Can't Catch You.
Alyssa, would you like to go ahead and just share a little bit about, um, you know, what Mindy shared with you and, and Sarah and Nicole, and the other dancers in the piece as you were developing this work and maybe um, some insight into your own experience of performing it as well? Yeah, um, so at first, um, like the very first part of rehearsals was, she had sent us videos of choreography to learn. So, um, and that was all individual. And then eventually we came together in the studio and put it together. But I feel like that really speaks to how like the whole beginning part starts. Um, there's no interaction between us. So it's kind of like each of us, especially at this time, we're going through our own things and problems. And um, there's a lot of vulnerability in those times. Um, but then in the end, um, you see starting to look at each other and interact. So um, there are always those people who are going through the same things as you. Um, you're going through them differently and in different ways, but you always have someone there. Um, and even if you can't hold on to what you're losing or whatever go whatever is going on at the time, um, everyone, someone else is going through the same thing. who will understand eventually what's what you're going through. Um, so yeah, I feel like this piece uh, really challenged me as a performer, um, an artist, to sh start showing that vulnerability, especially on film, and kind of embodying that in the movement and trying to get that out through dancing rather than words. So yeah. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, and you're going to see some more of Alyssa in the next piece. She's a soloist in this next work, um, along with some other friends <laughs> that we have on the call. George, do you want to set up the next piece? Um, I would love to, but for the sake of time, because then we're running out of time, let's just move on. Okay. All right. So the next piece is um, Armando Duarte's I do not speak Portuguese, and I am afraid I'm going to do a very bad job of <laughs> pronouncing the title. Do any of the dancers know it well and want to share it? Okay, all right, I'm gonna try here. So it's, um, do, mm, de Antonio, de Brincante e Viramundo. That was not, that was, that was very, very poor accent. Okay, um, here we go. So we can go ahead and cue up the last piece. <laughs>
crises populares. Decidi acondicionar essas considerações do corpo de espetáculo. Todavia, decidido a isso, fiquei um pouco indeciso, apreensivo, né? Será que essa junção de perto
Pernambuco falando para o mundo tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Pernambuco falando para o mundo tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Pernambuco falando para o mundo tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Pernambuco falando para o mundo tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. E tomba freaca, pipe e pandeiro, esse é o encontro, essa emoção. Rainhas e reis, rezados e rojão, e negros, nagos, navios, negreiros, acesso a recifes, Angola, Barbeiro, Maraca, Mascates e Maracatu, Baião, Berimbau, Batu, Bandu, Cusino, um Bigado, um Buranda, um Rosal, Capiba, Calunda, Calor, Carnaval, Oxó, Ciobá, Oxum, Rolobu. Pernambuco, falando para o mundo, tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Pernambuco, falando para o mundo, tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. São braços de mar, um rio caudaloso, o sertão sou seco, na mata estourado. Eu nos arrecife, sou um mar furado, a cova dos rios, salgado e formoso. E nesse meu céu azul luminoso, ao sul de estrelas cruzeiro avistei. Por ele à noite no mar me guiei, eu sou Paranã, sou Paranabuco. Falando pro mundo, eu sou Pernambuco, a ler meu Brasil, aqui comecei. Pernambuco, falando para o mundo, tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Pernambuco, falando para o mundo, tem um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Se alguém me escutar, que vindo a garganta, verá que meu canto desvenda segredos. Acaba mistérios, destrói todos os medos, herdeiro da voz, sou Dona Santa, meu canto é sangue, é pedra quem canta, estrela o tesouro do chão mais profundo. Eu sou um brincante, eu sou viramundo, se estou azongado, ninguém me segura. Acima de mim, só Deus nas alturas, eu sou Pernambuco, falando pro mundo. Pernambuco, falando para o mundo, tem um mundo avadioso, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Pernambuco, falando para o mundo, tem um mundo avadioso, meu cantar é meu tesouro. Pernambuco, falando para o mundo. Tenho um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é um tesouro. É na mão, falando para o mundo. Tenho um gogó de ouro, meu cantar é um tesouro. Um, I'm going to actually immediately uh, hand things over to Darius, who's with us. Um, Darius Gray is one of our graduate students in the department. Um, he's on the performance track getting his MFA in dance. Uh, he has had a wonderful, extensive professional career prior to coming back to school. Um, and he was the soloist in the work that you just saw. So um, let's hand it over to you, Darius. I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about um, some of what Armando shared with you, the background to this piece, um, your experience performing in it. And then I would also love to hear from Emily who uh, has joined us tonight and was another featured dancer in the work. Yeah, it's really exciting to see the work again um, being recorded and, you know, well, I'm trying to connect with the video, start the video, here we go. <laughs> so you can see, yeah, I'm really excited about seeing the work again. And first and foremost, I just want to congratulate UIDC for um, 
for really committing ourselves to like this um, this semester event. I think we did a great job based on the circumstances. And I just wanna congratulate everybody for amazing work of commitment and performance and, you know, trying to get our um, ideas out into the world. And I think that's really important for right now, but um, <clears throat> I'm really excited for this piece to re, um, I guess, sort of re reinvigorate myself into this idea of performance and embodiment of characterization, because um, this is a, a homage to Armando, which is a, a really important person in uh, Armando's life. Um, he's a scholar, he's a musician, you know, he specializes in the Frevo um, tradition in Brazil. And it's interesting to, to kind of embellish myself with the sort of idea of celebrating life through movement and also acknowledging that these sort of people who have a greater influence on people's lives like, like, um, Armando, Antonio, yeah. So um, it's it was a great um, opportunity for me to kind of explore these sort of worlds of not really understanding um, the lifestyles of Brazilian culture, but like taking all of the context that um, Armando has given us throughout this process and just really trying to incorporate this sort of idea into our movement, into our interpretations of what this piece was all about. And um, for me, I think it's really important also for me to, to reflect on how I feel about certain things, about carnival, about community, about, um, you know, this tradition of like, family and love and celebration and stuff like that, especially in these moments of COVID um, and just sort of reflecting on that while I'm doing the piece as well. So it's a combination of like understanding the context of the piece, but also putting myself into the piece. And I really um, admire Armando for allowing me to to be myself within the character, you know? I mean, it's about um, Antonio, but it's also about me as well and what I've experienced throughout my life. So just trying to find a balance of those two things was kind of great to, to explore certain emotional moments in the piece, which I think um, touched a lot of the other um, dancers in the company while I'm doing it. So like, I, I can't wait to re, uh, we um, start back rehearsing and just re-engage in this sort of idea um, for our live performances that are coming up soon. So it was really exciting for me to, to practice this. <laughs> and um, thank you so much for sharing that. I think it's really fun for people to hear from performers about how they connect with the material um, and, and how they make choices about how they perform something. So it's really wonderful to hear you say that. Emily, could you, would you be willing to, to do kind of a similar thing for us and talk, your, your character in the piece is, is very different. So Darius is kind of shared that he's like a sort of both the little bit Antonio and a little bit Darius in the work. What did Armando share with you? Emily is the character who um, started out with the very first umbrella at the beginning of the piece. Um, what would you like to share with us? You know, this was a very special role and I am very grateful that Armando gave me the opportunity to perform such a large part. Um, he allowed me and my umbrella to kind of color the whole space. And um, he presented the role to me as, you know, a little twinkle fairy, which kind of 
represents my personality. So I felt that the role was very fitting to me, which made it easier to put my own personality into. And, you know, I got to dance alongside Darius and be his kind of little playful um, side character. So I had fun. And the, you know, this piece was not originally created on our bodies. And so I had learned from a video and it was interesting because Armando gave us a lot of, you know, personal um, time and trust to put our own movements and, you know, change any parts that we felt didn't feel right on our bodies. And, you know, maybe differed from the old cast that had performed this originally. So he, he definitely had a lot of trust in the entire cast and I had ended up performing this work different every single time. Even when we were filming, I, you know, it was different every time, which kept it lively and especially for my character kept me playful and, you know, kind of like, hmm, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly, but that fits my role. Um, yeah. Thanks, Emily, for sharing that. Um, so uh, we're trying, we want to be mindful of um, everybody's time. There was a question in the chat. George, do you want to talk a little about this? Somebody is asking when we're going to start live performances, and this is a really unique, wonderful thing that we have coming up um, in I think less than a month. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about what's what's next for us and, and how some of these um, audience members with us tonight might be able to also join us for those? Thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Um, the We've been invited to work with the Des Moines Ballet and this is a very exciting opportunity for the company and also uh, collaborating with Hancher Auditorium. We're very excited to be working with them as they will be pre presenting some of their repertoire and we will be presenting a couple of our pieces from our season. Um, this is a very special opportunity. It's again, another opportunity for our dancers to experience this professional company, how they work, working with them and sharing the stage with them. So this is going to be very special. We will be performing in Des Moines at the end of the month and then in Iowa City. And then our last uh, location will be in Muscatine, correct? And um, we're very excited to be working with this really exceptional company. And um, all of those performances will be at outdoor performance venues, um, so we can head into them without being as concerned about some of the COVID safety protocols that we've had to be really mindful of over the last year. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things to be really hopeful and optimistic about right now as well, and so I think spring just feels full of hope and excitement for us, and I think entering into that season with these live outdoor performances and connecting with audiences in live shared spaces is really exciting. And I know we're all really looking forward to that. Um, so, I believe it's um, called spring into dance. Yeah, or dance in the spring, something like that, but de definitely. Um, and if you go to the Hancher website, you can see information about those three performances. Um, if you'd like, if you'd like to join us and spend some time um, with us in Ballet Des Moines, um, there's also going to be some live music um, for one of their pieces, so it's going to be very exciting. Yeah. Well, um, Melissa, I don't think that um, unless there are some more questions from any of our our attendees, um, I don't think that we have anything else to add at the moment. <laughs> well, you certainly um, have added a lot to tonight's program. I'm just so appreciative to you, Alex and George, as well as to the entire dance company. What a night, what a beautiful night. And we love working with the Figgy Museum. Yeah. It's yeah. such a superb place and your attendees are just such a lovely audience. Very inspiring for us. 
Well, thank you. I know they, they say the same about you. This is the first year in quite a quite a few years when we haven't been able to host you in person, but we're really excited to hopefully get back to it next year. Um, and in fact, I'm so excited for that. And I think that that's one of the things I'm looking forward to most when we get back to, to whatever it is that we get back to. So I just want to thank you both again, all, as well as the dancers. It truly really has been a beautiful evening. Um, sharing your talent and passion with us, your creativity and your drive to continue doing what you love, even during these difficult times, it's truly inspiring. So thank you all for that. And of course, I also wanna thank our audience members. I know you're all excited to see the exhibition for America in person. And of course the connection here was just celebrating the creativity of artists um, and what they're doing, especially as they persevere through harder times. Um, so in case, uh, I, I don't know that I actually mentioned that at the beginning of the program. So we hope you come and see the exhibition that we have connected with this wonderful perform these wonderful performances tonight. Uh, for America is on display through May 16th here at the Figgy. And for those of you who do plan to, to visit the museum in person, please remember to check out our policies online. We have up to date policies and procedures such as um, a mandatory mask policy. And if you don't have one, of course, we're happy to provide one for you. For those of you who are unable or not ready to visit the museum in person, we still hope you're able to experience that exhibition. We've actually created an entire exhibition microsite that you can view through the Figgy's main website. It's pretty cool, almost as good as being in the galleries and seeing the art, although not quite. But if you go to the Figgy's website, under the art tab, you're going to be able to access that virtual exhibition. And of course, we hope you'll all join us for upcoming virtual programs. Those are also listed on our website. Next week, we're thrilled to partner with the Putnam Museum and Science Center here in Davenport. We're going to hear from the Curator of History and Anthropology, Christina Castell, as she introduces the Putnam exhibition, Faces of the Past, which is offered in conjunction with For America. So we hope that you're able to join just like tonight um, with this program, we offer it for free, but we do ask that you register online so you can get that link. And if you do have any questions that come in in the middle of the night because you, you're too busy processing all of the great, um, all of the great performances you've seen and um, all of the wonderful things you've heard from the dancers, go ahead and send me an email. And I'll make sure to get that to the dance company and they can get those answers back to you. So Alex, George, UI Dance Company members, audience members, thank you all for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you at future programs and maybe even in the museum soon, definitely by next year uh, for a program like this. We hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks again. Good night.